In addition to the confidence interval, another way to learn about the value of a parameter is with a hypothesis test. In a hypothesis test, what we do is we assume that a parameter has some value, and then we take a random sample and judge the evidence that that parameter is actually less than, greater than, or unequal to the assumed value. So the idea is that if our sample is surprising, maybe our initial assumption is not true. A hypothesis test has two ingredients. The hypotheses, which are statements that generate a probability distribution on the sample statistics, like the one we saw in the last chapter, and a test statistic, which is a measure of where our sample falls in that distribution. The first thing we do in a hypothesis test is we state the hypotheses. The null hypothesis, denoted H0, is some claim about the parameter from the status quo or common knowledge. This is what we assume that the parameter is. The null hypothesis therefore generates a probability distribution of the sample statistics, usually according to the central limit theorem. The alternative hypothesis, denoted HA, is that the parameter is less than, greater than, or unequal to the value supposed by the null hypothesis. This is the hypothesis that we're trying to find evidence for with our sample. Next, we take a large random sample and derive a statistic from that sample where the derived statistic estimates our parameter. So for example, if we're trying to estimate the mean, we're gonna look at the sample mean. If we're trying to estimate the true proportion, we're gonna look at the sample proportion. The test statistic is a measure of the size of that sample relative to the distribution supposed by the null hypothesis. Basically, the test statistic is going to be a z-score. We calculate the probability of the test statistic according to the distribution supposed by the null hypothesis. The idea is that if our test statistic is surprising, there's going to be evidence for the alternative hypothesis. If we see a bunch of surprising test statistics, in other words, maybe the null hypothesis is not true. If not, if our test statistic is pretty normal given our distribution, this does not provide much evidence for the alternative hypothesis. Finally, the probability of observing our test statistic or something even further away from the mean of our distribution is called the p-value. It is the, it's a probability. So the lower the p-value, the more surprising the test statistic and the more favor in terms of the alternative hypothesis. If p is greater than 10%, then there is little to no evidence for the alternative hypothesis. Things that happen 10% of the time happen all the time. If P is between 5% and 10%, then there is some evidence for the alternative hypothesis. If P is between 1% and 5%, then we say there's strong evidence for the alternative hypothesis. And if P is very small, less than 1%, we say there is very strong evidence for the alternative hypothesis.